Hi, it's Rich, the Louisiana Hobby Guy. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can make this awesome clock in under five minutes using Lightburn. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw out a primitive, a circle. So on the left side toolbar, we're going to click on circle. We're going to hold down the shift key so that we can draw a perfect circle and drag it out. If we didn't hold the shift key, we'd get a distorted circle like so. So that's why we hold the shift key. Now that we've got our circle, I'm going to hit escape, which selects it. And up here, where you see width and height, we are going to make sure we're in inches and not millimeters or I'm going to do that anyway and I'm going to change this and I'm going to make sure that the lock is on here I'm going to change this to 10 and press enter because that's the size of the clock that we're going to do today now once we've done that we've got the shape of our clock which is a circle and you can make this any shape that you want uh, for today's demonstration we're going to use a circle we're ready to add some tick marks to it or I guess that's the best thing I can think of as a tick mark, so I'm going to leave it that way. So I'm going to come back up here to the left side toolbar and grab the rectangle tool. And I'm going to draw out a rectangle. And it doesn't matter what size it is, because um, we're going to fix that now. So now I'll press the escape key. And that brings us to our selector tool. And I think we're going to make this... Oh, probably about so high, something like that. Now I'll use my arrow key to bring it down just a little bit. Uh, let's click off of it and see what that looks like. I think that looks that looks pretty good. Now this is these are going to be the hour uh, rectangles here for the clock, and maybe we'll make them just a little bit smaller, like that. So now we're going to go ahead and click on it. And we're going to click on the circle while holding the control key to select both of them. Or you could click and drag over the whole thing. And we're going to come up here to the vertical stamp. And we're going to align the objects on the vertical centers by clicking this button. Now that just position that perfectly in the middle. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to create an array of these. 12 of them all the way around this circle so we're going to click on the rectangle hold down the control key and we're going to click on the circle and it's important that we do it in that order if you come over to the left side toolbar you'll see the array tool over here we'll click on that and I've done clocks before uh, so you know um, it's already got the number in here but we have the wrong number we need actually 12 of these so there we go. When you first use your array tool, you may not have these two uh, checked. So what you want to tick these off because um, you have to make it rotary to go all the way around and you have to uncheck that line. So if, if we left this off, do you see how this line is black here? It's actually making 12 copies of that line, which we don't want. So we're going to tick this on and you see it goes, it turns dotted. So that means now we only have one copy of that and we're good to go. And if any of your other numbers are wrong here, you can change them. So we're going to start at zero. We're going to do a full circle, 360 degrees, and the step is automatically calculated. So now we say, okay, and we've got that done. And look, it's already looking like a clock. <laughs> now, the next thing we're going to do is come back to the left side toolbar and we're going to grab an ellipse and we're going to hold down the shift key again so we make a circle and make a circle press the escape key selects it and we're going to position this let's zoom in so you can see the positioning we're going to position this right in the middle and you see it snap in place there are snap guides here it'll snap directly to the middle of that line snap directly to the middle of that line we want it directly in the middle of that rectangle and that's perfect right there now we're going to duplicate that and this is going to be our 
uh, minutes. So we're going to do the same thing over again. We're going to click on the circle, hold down the control key, click on the other circle, come down to our array on the left side toolbar, click on that, except this time we need 60 of these. So we're going to type in 60. And like magic, look at that. We have our numbers. So now if, if you're wondering how I'm moving the workspace, I'm pressing down on my mouse wheel, holding it, and dragging around. And that's how you can reposition your workspace. Then I'm going to uh, roll my mouse wheel just a little bit, just to zoom out a bit. So now that everything's selected, I'm going to press my escape key. But you see we have the minutes inside the hours as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the first one. Then I'm going to hold the control key, click on the next one, and do this all the way around on each of these circles. Now, see, I didn't get that one. You see how this one is animated? That means that I got it. When I clicked on this one, I, it didn't animate. So that means I didn't get it. Now it's animated. Now I got it. And we're just going to go around the whole graphic, clicking on all of these circles that we don't want in our rectangles. And then once we're done, just hit delete, and they're gone. And look at that, we've got our clock face. Now the next thing we're going to do, I, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to burn this one on wood. Yeah, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab another ellipse over here on the left side, hold down the shift key, and we're going to draw another circle. Press escape. Now it's selected. And we, let's see, my mechanism is a quarter of an inch. So uh, I have this in inches up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click in here and I'm going to put one slash four I N and press enter. And now I have a perfect quarter of an inch, which is the exact size of my mechanism. And that'll be a good drill guide for me. So now holding the control key, I'm going to select the center circle and I'm going to select the outer circle. And then up in the top toolbar, there's a bullseye up here. And that'll align the uh, two circles on both uh, centers. So I'm going to click that. And now that circle is directly centered on my clock. And you can see how, how quickly this is progressing. So now we have to add the numbers. So I'm going to click on the A on the left toolbar. I'm going to bring that in. And I'm going to type the number 1. Just an arbitrary number here. I'm going to select it. And I'm going to scale it down. And I think that looks pretty good like that that's about the right size so now I'm gonna select the number one I'm gonna hold control and I'm gonna select the rectangle above it and we're gonna come back over here and we're gonna click the vertical centers again now the number one is perfectly aligned I think we need to come up though so I'm gonna highlight it and we don't want to move it now because it's perfectly aligned with our mouse so we're gonna use the the arrow key on the keyboard and move it up to the right spot and I think we got got to go maybe one more step up yeah maybe one more and there we go we have our number so we're gonna do the same thing that we just did we're going to click on the number we're then gonna click on the outer circle and we're gonna come back down to the array tool and we're going to come into the box and change 60 to 12. And now we have 12 numbers. In this tool, if you wanted to, um, you could untick this rotate objects and have all of your numbers uh, perfectly vertical. I happen to like them running with the clock. So that's why I do it this way. But that's your preference. You can have it either way here. So I'm going to say, okay. I'm going to click off the graphic. 
and now we're ready to edit the numbers so to edit any field you just double click it so we're going to double click this and we're going to change this one to add the two there so we have our 12 we're going to come over to the right side of where the two should be click in there backspace put in the two click backspace put in the three click backspace put in the four and so on Now when we get to the 10, all we have to do is add the 0 here. And the same thing for the 11. And that's it. We're good to go. Now if we press the escape key twice and we click off of it, there's our clock. How easy was that? Now the only thing we have left to do at this point is add our graphic. So on the right side here, uh, in our library, which uh, most people are going to see normally have cuts and layers here. I go to my art library. I'm going to go to fishing. And over here, skull rod. I'm going to click and drag this one right into the middle. And uh, now we've got our graphic. And don't worry, I'm going to leave links to these uh, down below in the description where you can download both the light burn file or the graphic, either one, whichever you like. So now I'm going to hold down the control key. I'm going to come up here to this corner handle and I'm going to scale this on all sides to about there. Then I'm going to hold control again. I'm going to click the outer circle so that I can align the skull with the outer circle on center. And the way we do this is to come up to this bullseye right here. And this bullseye, if I click on that, we've done it before with the center circle. It positions it perfectly centered. So if I click off of it now, there we go. And I think that looks awesome just like that. I'm going to scroll out just a little bit. And what we're going to do now is assign cuts and speeds. So I'm going to click and drag over the entire graphic. I'm going to come over here to cuts and layers. And we already have this labeled as a line. What we're going to do is we're going to change this to a fill and a line. And the reason why I'm doing that fill and line, it really makes the, the edges on the numbers and the tick marks and the minute circles. It'll make them really clean by running both of those on there. So now I'll click off of it. I'm going to click on the graphic and I'm going to assign this to a new layer which is going to be layer number one the blue layer and we're going to turn this into just a line and there we go we're going to click on the outer circle we're going to assign that to the blue the actually you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this out so I'm going to assign the outer layer to the red so that it's a separate layer because I'm going to actually cut this out of the wood, the circle. But the center one I don't want to cut. Okay, so now we've got, if we come up here, uh, these are our three layers. If I right click on a layer, it shows me what it is. So I'm going to right click on this one. It tells me these are all the numbers. And while we're here, before we go to the next step, we may as well set the speeds and the... Uh, power so on the first label or layer which are the numbers uh, I'm gonna put that at uh, I'm gonna go 1500 and I'm going to go um, 45 power fill in line and the lines per inch I think I want that around I'm going to say 250 for lines per inch. That that should really. No, I'm going to go. I'm going to go 200. Yep, and that'll work well on my laser. The next one is the center graphic. 
On this one, I'm going to go 2,085. And that's all we need to set on that one. And, and that'll, that'll uh, cut really beautifully. The third one is to cut out the clock. I'm going to be using uh, three millimeter wood. Uh, I've sort of has, have an idea of putting this in a little uh, light box. So on the three millimeter wood, uh, I know that if I go 200 speed and 100% power, and if I go three passes, it'll cut cleanly through it. So that's going to be my cut. That'll cut out the circle out of the wood. So I'm going to say, okay, we've got all that done. So now we've got all our layers assigned. The only thing that we're missing is gone fishing over here. So let's go ahead and take care of that now. So what we're going to do on, on the gone fishing is obviously we can't type it in here. It won't look right. So what we're going to have to do is type it along this line. And the only way to do that is to come up to the left and you'll see the pencil tool. We're going to click on that pencil tool and we're going to come down here. We're going to draw a new line. So we're going to start right here. And there's my line and I can bring it anywhere. If I bring it a short distance, it'll snap to the existing line that's already there. So we'll do it like that and click, click 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 now you saw that time if you look really closely if you go too far it won't snap to the item that's there so that's good click 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 and click and that's it and that's the line now you can either press escape or you can right click to get out of this and then we're going to press uh, we're going to click off the entire graphic. We're going to make sure our selected tool is selected. Click on it and move it off to the side. And let's zoom out. Now we're going to uh, come over to our text tool. Grab it. Click here. And we're going to put gone fishing. There we go. Um, I kind of like that font. It looks good. We're going to select that and bring it over just to check the size before we do this. And that's way too big. So uh, we're going to come up to the height up in the top here. And click the down arrow. Down again, down again, down again. Down one more time. That looks perfect right there. Then we're going to bring it over here. Now we've got our our text we've got our line let's drag over both of them and we're gonna come up to the top tool menu and then we're gonna come down here to apply path to text and what this is gonna do is it's gonna move the the text and curve it for us so we hit that and boom there we go we're all set to go now we're gonna take this and drag it right into the spot again it's gonna snap in so there it just snapped in did you see that snap 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 and that's it and we've got our lettering and it's perfect now the only thing if you look in close here is we still have our guideline and that's going to burn so what we're going to do is we're going to select that line come down to the bottom where it says t1 and we're going to click on t1 and make that a tool path now, if we come up to our cuts and layers and you see where it says show and T1, we're going to turn that off. We know it's not going to burn now because it's a tool path. So we're going to turn it off just to make, make it look nicer. So it's, it's not confusing. And there we go. We've got our finished clock. Only thing we need to do now is take a preview. So we're going to come up here to the preview, click on it. And there we go. That's a beautiful clock right there. Now, uh, if we zoom in, you can actually see the lines per inch here. And I think this is perfect. We're going to be uh, doing lines horizontally. And we're going to be doing an extra line all the way around the outside. And that's going to give that definition. 
and you can see the definition as I uh, zoom out. See how this is black around the edge? So uh, we want that definition. That's why we choose line and fill for that. Okay. So there we go. We've got a perfect clock. How long did that take? <laughs> Didn't take long at all. Trust me, folks, when you start learning how to do this, this is going to go very quickly. Like I said, I can do these in a different clock faces in under five minutes. And you can too. It just takes a little bit of practice. So if you've gotten some help out of this video or learned something today, I'd appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe to the channel. I've got a lot more of these videos in mind to uh, come out. And I've got a lot of, of experience with uh, light burn, lasers, and CNC. And as well as 3D printing. So if you're into any of that stuff, uh, I'm going to be having a lot of instructional videos coming out soon. And I'll be posting them to my YouTube channel. So like and subscribe. All right, so if you were paying attention, I made a couple of mistakes in the video that I'm going to correct now. And one of them is gone fishing. If you see, if I right click on the cut layer, I have that set to cut. So before I actually burn this, I've got to change that or else it'll be a disaster. So I'm going to click on the gone fishing and I'm going to put that on the zero one with the uh, clock numbers. And now if I right click on that zero one, you see the gone fishing is in the right spot. And also I've done a little thinking on the, the uh, speed and the power. And I don't think it's going to come out right. So I'm going to do the numbers at 2065% power. My number was just too low before now that I'm thinking about it. I'm going to do the uh, engraving of the graphic at 1400 speed and 90 power to make it real sharp. And I'm changing the cut to 100 speed and 100%. And that, my friends, I think is going to do it. So I'm going to go grab a piece of wood and I'm going to drop it on the laser and burn this and let's see what happens. Uh, I'm pretty sure with those speeds and powers, it's going to come out good. So let's give that a shot and see what happens. Okay, we're back. Uh, we did the burn. Here's the result. A couple little problems with the laser. Uh, if you look in here, you'll see that from the 11 over to the 2 the numbers burn perfectly so my Y uh, my left side Y belt is loose on the top so I guess I'll have to tighten both sides the top and the bottom to try and fix that um, I guess could have went just a little bit darker on the uh, numbers and the minutes and the hours but I think if everything was adjusted properly if you watch in the video of the actual burn you'll see uh, as the laser moves up just before it hits that 11 position is where the the uh, motor kicks down on the Y and when it gets a minute after 11 it's almost to a stop and it's burning perfectly so it's definitely that Y belt adjustment that's the problem um, and then as it comes around to the two and almost yeah right about the two is where the left side Y starts moving again and uh, you see it gets lighter and lighter and lighter as it goes around and that also affected the burnt edges so if you see over here on the actual cut, uh, one thing I didn't do was move the air assist from the other machine, which I probably should have. Um, and then, you know, this entire cut all the way around would have been perfect. So I did get some burned edges here. That'll, that'll wash off or maybe a little slight sanding. It'll probably wash off. I haven't washed it yet. But um, yeah, that's about it I mean it came out fine if if I had everything adjusted properly on this machine I haven't used it in a couple of months um, I've been using the other one but if everything was adjusted properly uh, I think this would have burned just perfectly I love the way the graphic came out 
uh, came out stunning. I have my little drill hole in the center uh, to drill out for my mechanism to fit through. And uh, except for those, those two issues, which um, I think I'll probably just fix that with a Sharpie. Just darken everything up with a Sharpie. And it'll be good to go. But had I not had that issue with, with the Y belt, um, this would have burned really nicely. And uh, there wouldn't have been any problems whatsoever. It would have all been like uh, what you see from 11 to 2. So, um, and I think it looks like even the X belt needs to get uh, tensioned as well. But all in all, I'm sort of happy with the result. I'll clean up those burnt edges and it'll be ready to install the clock. Well, there you go. That's it. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want, you can stay around for the rest of the burn video.